the bonk weapon where you can knock out the monster and eventually you know kill it with the hammer yeah that's right you heard me the boink weapon <clears throat> i mean let's just get to the five tips <laughs> but the fifth tip will be about skills that i would recommend using with this weapon hey guys my name is short devil and i do stream on twitch the link is down in the description below where you can talk to me live and see me mess about in other various games other than monster on top so be sure to check me out there and also to make sure to follow me on twitter because twitch's live notification just completely suck joking uh they're, they're kind of bad but <laughs> check out my twitter to see whenever i'm going live and a few channel updates in there Now before we start off the whole video, let me remind you that these 5 tips are mostly for beginners. I mean, it might have a few tips for advanced and veteran players, but I'm sure you guys know what you're doing with this weapon. So, I guess you don't really need to tune in, but it's mostly for the beginner players. So let's us begin with our first tip, which is aim for the head. I've seen maybe a few hammer players that are just running for the tail of the monster but there's no point this weapon is a blunt weapon you're not going to be able to sever a tail off with this weapon so i don't know why you're aiming for the tail go for the head it is more effective to aim for the head of the monster with this weapon because this weapon is able to apply impact damage meaning that if you hit the monster's head enough you're going to be able to knock them out and they get stunned and you get to deal some massive damage while the monster's knocked out That is why I call this weapon the boink weapon, where you just boink on their heads enough and they'll just get knocked out. So if I see you players that are using the hammer and you're going for the tail, then I swear I will. The second tip that I can give to you players is to make use of the second stage of the charge attack and the power charge. This is because it has a nice little lunge attack, I guess, for whenever you use it. And if you can position yourself correctly, you can deal some nice stun damage. And also, it's much better to do that attack rather than trying to just get up to the monster and do a combo. Because the monster's most probably moving, so it's just better to just hit the monster and quickly charge up another attack if you can. And also, as I mentioned, the power charge state. Using this will allow you to increase your attack and your stun power of your hammer. So, combine both this and the level 2 charge attack then you're able to basically build up the amount of stun and eventually knock out the monster. And at least it doesn't leave you to a wide open attack if you're trying to do a full blown combo with the hammer. The third tip is this weapon's strongest attack, which is called the Charge Brutal Big Bang. Now to do this attack, all you need to do is hold down the charge attack to the highest level and make sure that you have the power charge stay on. Now make sure that you do not move the analog stick while you let go of the trigger for the charge attack because you basically do another attack where you spin yourself around with the swing of the hammer something like a i guess a beyblade basically become a human beyblade if you think about it that way <laughs> now this attack is kind of bad because the only way that you can get out of the animation is by quickly pressing the y or triangle button otherwise you cannot dodge out of the way to like cancel out this animation so if the monster is going to be swinging in for an attack you can't dodge while you're stuck spinning around <laughs> so that's why i say this is bad anyways back to the charge brutal big bang if you pull this attack off you will be able to hit the monster three times before the final hit the final hit will do some massive damage so if you're trying to wake up the monster with this attack be sure to do it at some distance so that the final attack does hit otherwise if the first or second attack hits the monster's roar might like stop your attack so that's why you know make sure you hit it with the final attack and also to make sure to follow up this attack with the clutch claw just by pressing the l2 button you'll be able to latch on to the monster now once you've latched on your character will spin towards the monster and this spin will do a lot of damage along the way and obviously if you're hitting the head of the monster during the spin you're applying a lot of stun damage which i see a lot of people do with the clutch claw so be sure to use that as much as you can The next tip is to make use of the environment. Now I'm talking about the runnable walls and the sliding slopes. If you use your charge attack on either the wall or the slope, 
you can basically do that spinning attack that you do with the clutch claw. During this attack, if you obviously aim for the head of the monster, you're applying stun damage. And also while doing this attack, you're able to apply mountain damage, which will allow you to mount the monster. It's always like killing two birds with one stone. You're applying stun damage if you hit the head of the monster, and you're also applying mountain damage, allowing you to jump onto the monster. And here we are at the fifth and final tip, which is skills that I would recommend using. Now I'm not saying that you definitely need those skills, I'm just saying possibly take a look at them. One of them skills is Slugger. Slugger allows you to basically stun the monster even more than you normally would. And obviously the higher the Slugger level is, the more chances you'll be able to stun the monster. Marathon Runner is another great skill because while you're charging up your attacks, you're draining your stamina bar. So having Marathon Runner on will reduce the amount of drain that you take out of the stamina bar. Stamina Surge is another great one because you want to recover your stamina as fast as possible whenever you're done with your charge attacks. So this is another perfect choice. Evade Extender is another great one because this weapon doesn't come with a shield. So your only option is to dodge out of the way of the monster's attack. You're not blocking any attack with a hammer, right? The Diabolos Ambition is a good one because it gives you the Slugger Secret, allowing you to raise the maximum level of the Slugger skill. But you do need three pieces of Diabolos Armor for you to get the Slugger Secret. The Frostfang Armor also gives you Slugger Secret, but you need three pieces of the Frostfang Armor. And that's all I have for the hammer. Remember that I wanted to keep this video short to give, to give you guys just the tips that you just need to have for using this weapon. Now I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found it useful in some way. Give it a like if you did and subscribe to the channel for more helpful videos that I plan to make in the future. Also if you haven't already I do stream on Twitch. The link is down in the description below where you can talk to me live and see me mess about in some games I guess. <laughs> So make sure to follow me there. And finally my Twitter is also down in the description below where you can just see me tweet some dumb stuff every now and then. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys later. Oh my god these people. You push too hard and then you just get killed. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that snipe was just, oh.